Hi, I'm Brandi Heflin. I'm a personalized physics instructor, and I help high school and college students feel confident and successful in learning physics. Welcome to week two of my AP Physics exam preparation video series. This week, we'll be taking a look at questions that test multiple topics in the same question. Sometimes they fit together seamlessly, and sometimes they seem a little contrived, as you'll see as we work through the questions this week. And once again, the four types of questions on the AP Physics 1 exam include experimental design, a question on qualitative to quantitative translation, a question that is a paragraph length response or paragraph argument, and two questions that are short answer. The question in this video is number four, short answer. Taking a look at AP Physics 1, 2018, question number one, which tested uniform circular motion and universal gravitation. Spacecraft of mass M is in a clockwise circular orbit of radius R around Earth, as shown in the figure below. The mass of the Earth is Me. Obviously, it's not to scale. Part A, in the figure below, draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the spacecraft. Each force must be represented by, represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the spacecraft. So we're gonna remember that in circular motion, there's going to be a net force that points toward the center of the path. That's the centripetal force. And when we're talking specifically about an orbit, it's the gravitational force that provides the centripetal force. So for this question, we're going to need to draw an arrow that starts on our spacecraft and points radially toward the center of the circle. And again, that's gonna be FG for the gravitational force. And for scoring, we get one point for an arrow directed toward Earth's center. And we're going to get another point for a correct label on the arrow representing the gravitational force. where the arrow is pointing toward Earth's center. So you can't have the gravitational force pointing elsewhere. And it's worth noting that a maximum of one point could be earned if there were extraneous forces present. And that is where this no components business comes in. A proper force diagram doesn't include components. The components are part of the analysis, not part of identifying the forces, which is what that kind of diagram is for. So you should always just draw the forces and not components, regardless of what your teacher may have let you done. The AP exam is pretty strict about it. And in part B1, we're going to derive an equation for the orbital period T of the spacecraft in terms of M, M, E, R, and physical constants as appropriate. If you need to draw anything other than what you have shown in part A to assist in your solution, use the space below. Do not add anything to the figure in part A. That's also a very common warning 
when you have drawn a free body diagram in one part of the question. So again, we are showing here that the um, centripetal force in an orbit is caused by or provided by the gravitational force. And we can calculate centripetal force with mv squared divided by r. And we can calculate the gravitational force with capital G, universal gravitational constant, times m times me divided by r squared. Before we go any further with that, notice here that the mass of the spacecraft cancels out on both sides. And the r in the denominator on the left cancels out with one of the powers of r on the right. So how do we get from this to something involving period? Well, we're going to remember that for something moving in a circle, the distance it travels is simply the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, divided by the time that takes, the period. So now we can substitute that into our previous expression. We'll have 2 pi r over t, the whole quantity squared, equals g m e over r. So our next step here will be 4 pi squared r squared over t squared equals g m e over r and we can solve that for t squared we will have 4 pi squared r cubed over g m e and finally at last t will be equal to the square root of 4 pi squared r cubed over G M E. So for scoring, we are going to get one point for using or implying Newton's second law, which I'll abbreviate here N two L which we do by equating centripetal force to gravitational force. We're gonna get our second point for explicitly or implicitly determining the speed of the craft to be um, V equals 2 pi r over t. And our final point is going to come for a correct answer algebraically equivalent. or algebraically equal to um, our final expression here, which means that we can also get a point for t squared equals four pi squared r cubed over gme because that's algebraic, algebraically equivalent to that final answer. And in part two, a second spacecraft of mass 2m is placed in a circular orbit with the same radius r. Is the orbital period of the second spacecraft 
greater than, less than, or equal to the orbital period of the first spacecraft, briefly explain your reasoning. So here is my hot tip. Briefly explain your reasoning first, and then go back and select your answer. And that's because you have to think this through in order to select an answer. So, Briefly explain it first, then sec select your answer. So here would be the reasoning for this. According to the equation in the previous part, the period of the spacecraft depends only on M, E, and R, not on M, the mass of the spacecraft. Thus, the periods are equal. And um, scoring for this one, you're going to get uh, just one point for a correct explanation that T, whoops, I left out T as I was writing, hang on. that T depends only on M, E, and R, or you could say that T does not depend on M, or you can also get credit here for an explanation consistent with your answer to part B1. And this is a really common thing that the scores do across um, all of the AP physics exams. If you have to propagate your answer through to subsequent parts of the question and you don't have it correct in the first part, they only penalize you for that there. If you take that expression and use it and interpret it consistently with what you found in all the subsequent parts, usually you're still going to earn credit on all of those subsequent parts, just not for the first place and the first mi mistake that you made. And at last, part C, the first spacecraft is moved into a new orbit that has a greater radius than r, as shown in the figure below, is the speed of the spacecraft in the new orbit greater than, less than, or equal to the original speed? Briefly explain your reasoning. So, hey, hey, once again, <laughs> we're going to briefly explain first, and then we will come back to check a line that makes sense based on our reasoning. So uh, here is how I would answer this. Um, in part B1, uh, we showed, or you could even say I showed, um, mv squared over r equals g m m e over r squared which reduces to e squared let me clean up that a little bit it's not that easy to tell that that's two v squared equals g m e over r. So speed decreases as r increases and the new velocity will be less.
And for this question, you get um, a point for, oh, there we go. I lose my cursor at least once per video. Um, you get a point for a correct explanation of why speed decreases with increasing orbital radius. And it's important to note, um, and this was in the scoring guidelines, that if the uh, wrong selection is made, then the explanation is not graded. And this is one of those things that the scorers discuss. Um, when they are gathered together um, over the summer to grade the exam so that they can make sure that they, you know, apply these kinds of judgments consistently across all of the exams. So I hope you have enjoyed today's explanation of a Physics 1 question that uh, covers multiple topics in the same question. If you have a video solution you'd like to see on my YouTube channel when my AP Physics series is done, you can send that to physicsproblemrequests at gmail.com. If you need some email assistance, you can reach me at freephysicshelpline at gmail.com with a limit of 10 questions per academic year. You can learn more about my services by emailing me at brandyheplinphysics at gmail.com or visiting my website, virtualphysicsofficehours.com. You can also find me on Facebook. I'm physics tutor Brandy. So just a few notes and disclaimers. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. The College Board does not endorse or recognize this video or my services. All of the materials presented are available on AP Central at the link shown here for the AP Physics 1 exam. And those materials include the release free response questions, the scoring guidelines, and sample student responses and commentary. I strongly encourage students to review those sample responses to get a feel for the different levels and quality of the responses prepared by students who took these released exams live and to see what the scores for that year were looking for and how they decided to award points. I'm physics tutor Brandy. I love physics and I love helping you. Until next time.